Welcome to Eyes on the Weekend on Live Score, where we look ahead to the big fixtures that you cannot afford to miss. The only place to start is the Carabao Cup final in England between Tottenham and Manchester City. Massive game this, Dean. Two former members of the European Super League clashing should be a big one. Yeah, definitely. Um, beyond that joke, um, this is actually a very, very big game. Uh, Man City, a week ago, were on for a quadruple. Lose this one suddenly they're only capable of doing a double and maybe struggling to do that because that would rely on them winning the Champions League, which, let's face it, is still a pretty big ask. Um, so, yeah, they're going to win the Premier League, but to end this season with just one trophy, that's quite a big disappointment, honestly. Um, it's a big cut climb down from winning a quadruple anyway. Um, so, yeah, City have to win this to make sure they get at least a double. But on the flip of it, Massive for Spurs too, because, well, they hardly ever win trophies, do they? Um, no Jose Mourinho anymore, but an opportunity to win their first silverware since 2008. And it was this trophy that they last got their hands on. Ryan Mason is in charge for this game. He's only 29. Um, unbelievable, really. The likes of Lloris, Gareth Bale, Alderweireld are actually all older than him. Um, what a story if in his second game as a manager at 29 years old, he beats Pep and wins a trophy. Yeah, I'm sure, Such a big game. sure Mourinho would love that, wouldn't he? Absolutely <laughs> love to watch that. I saw an interesting thing on Twitter from Rich Jolly who said, Ryan Mason, the difference in age between him and Hugo Lloris, if Roy Hodgson had a manager, uh, a goalkeeper who was the same amount older than him at Crystal Palace, it would be Dino Zoff. So that's a <laughs> great back for you. Um, no Harry Kane, Sam, will be tough for Spurs. 31 goals, 43 games this season. I mean, even aside from the goals, it's, it's just a gigantic missing piece. And, and also, kind of secondarily, do you think they have a better chance of winning this cup final now that Mourinho is gone with Ryan Mason in charge or if they had stuck with Jose Mourinho? Well, the Kane point first... Obviously, a massive problem. He's their best player. He's the top Premier League goal scorer. He's the top Premier League assist provider. So, to lose a key man like that for the final against the best team in the country, yeah, that's tough. And we're looking at obvious replacements here. Lucas Mora led the line in midweek against Southampton. He was okay. You know what Lucas is like. Some players are inconsistent game to game. Lucas is inconsistent within the same game. Sometimes he does like really cool things, snakes past a few players, hold onto the ball. Sometimes he just loses it. And it could be a problem. Turning the ball over an attack could be a problem against relentless possession heavy Man City. We've got a different pro profile of striker there to choose from. If you want to, Spurs, you've got Carlos Vinicius, who was unused on the bench on Wednesday. Much more of a traditional target man. Good hold-up play. Could be important when alleviating that pressure. Whatever happens, we're going to see a confused Spurs team. So I can't really get on board with the idea that they've got a better chance under Ryan Mason because even if his style is better, it obviously can't transfer in a week. Gareth Bale said after the game against Southampton, they've only had a couple of sessions, they're still trying to get to grips with it. I'd say Mason probably moulds himself more on Pochettino, someone he absolutely idolises. You can't go from Mourinho to Pochettino in a week, guys. So whatever we see, I think it's just going to be confused. Yeah. And we'll see, we'll see if they've got the difference makers or the, the key moments in the game to come out on top. I think that's exactly it. And you saw it in that Southampton game. Like the two halves were very different. Mm. Um, against Southampton, you know, they didn't even get a shot on target. I think it was like the 50th minute or something they first managed it. But they won the game 2-1. And with Bale and, and Son, you've always got a chance. Because even if you do only get one opportunity, those two have got a pretty good chance of converting it. So it, all hope is not gone for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I do think this is going to be fascinating. I think perhaps maybe something we can focus on here is, is mindset and whether City as favourites can deliver here at Wembley. Everyone expects them to win, obviously, but they lost last weekend to Chelsea at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final when everybody expected them to win. Last season, they lost to Arsenal at Wembley in the FA Cup semi-final when everybody expected them to win. Spurs will surely look at small things like that to build belief in their own case. Yeah, but what happened in last year's Carabao Cup final, Jack? Yeah, yeah. they uh, won so against. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> City I mean, that was a, They were favourites to win, and they won, my friend. That no, yeah, just, they did have to I'm play just, quite a poor Villa side at that. I'm point, just though. joking around. I mean, look, football is unpredictable, and that's that's the beauty of it. Spurs are massive underdogs for this final, and if there's something working in their favour here, is that they've actually finally come from behind to win a game. You know, in, in Ryan Mason's first game in charge, they've done it. And under Jose Mourinho, Spurs had lost all six games that they'd been trailing at halftime. And at the first opportunity, Ryan Mason sets that straight, comes from 
behind from a, a half-time deficit and, and wins the game. So already the mindset appears to be changing. And we have to ask that question of City, of course, after the recent FA Cup semi-final failures. But uh, we're not genuinely doubting this team. I, I don't, well, I'm not, at least. And the fact remains, if City turn up and play their best football, they will win this game. They're the better side. They've got a better system, more settled, better players. Did you see Phil Foden on, on Wednesday? I mean, that's ominous, isn't it? If you're a Tottenham fan watching that. Oh my goodness me, Phil Foden is on fire. I would hate to face that player and this team, to be honest. Yeah, totally. And look, on their day, City beat anyone, everyone, whoever you put in front of them, they can beat them. Um, the a performance that stood out for me was against Borussia Mönchengladbach about a month ago and they won 2-0. Now people will say, well, it was just Gladbach. But on that evening, the way that they played, they would have beaten whoever was in front of them because it was one of those games where they had everything in rhythm. The, the movement, the speed of their passing, the creativity, the quality of their finishing, it was all there. That, lads, they've won this cup three years in a row. Um, I think it's pretty fair to say Spurs are going to have to catch him on an off day to win this. Yeah, I think both of you very reasonably are, are going for City wins there. But we have just had one of the most topsy-turvy weeks in English football. I'm refusing to call anything here. Um, <laughs> let's move across to the Premier League, where two old rivals going head-to-head -head at Ellen Road on Sunday. Leeds United versus Manchester United. This is a massive game in the English calendar and, and a huge shame there'll be no fans of this because this is something really special and something that the Premier League has lacked for, for many years. It's a, it's a really, really big fixture. Obviously, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's men are favourites. They won the reverse fixture 6-2 back in December. Sam, what do you make of Leeds' chances of revenge here? Well, United haven't lost an away game in the Premier League all season. So there's the first mountain to climb. It is going to have to be a Marcelo Bielsa masterclass, which we know he's capable of. Uh, but he's going to have to draw on those lessons that he would have learned from that 6-2 thwacking at Old Trafford they took earlier in the season. We don't use that word enough, do we? Thwacking. Great word for a big defeat. 6-2, man. It was it was horrid. It, they were like two nil down inside four minutes. They continued to play expansively. And look, look, you can play with explosivity and attack. You probably need to reduce the amount of space you're playing in if you're up against a, a side that's technically better than you midfield and physically dominant as well. And in Pogba and Co and McTominay, that's what they are. So, look, I, I like to think that Leeds have got a, a real chance here and that someone like Calvin Phillips can step up and boss the midfield. But the reality is the last time these two players met, so, sorry, these two teams met, Calvin Phillips was withdrawn at half time because he was so poor. I do think that United are a very, very bad matchup for Leeds. And I think it's really difficult for Leeds to overcome this, no matter how many adjustments they make. Yeah, 100%. And, and to add to that, you, you mentioned it there, but Dean, United's away form truly is exceptionally special. 36 points on the road this season, six points more than they've picked up at home at Old Trafford. It, you know, this is a, a very special run. Really is, yeah. I mean, you throw in the fact they're on a five-game win streak and well, they lads, they barely concede any goals, do they? I think it's 10 in their last 17 and three of them were against Leicester in the same game. So they don't concede goals typically, this Solskjaer team, and this is why they're favourites. Leeds will be very motivated, though, to do this for their fans because we cannot underplay the fact that there is a huge rivalry between these clubs they hate each other. Let's just say that. They hate each other. Um, so, yeah, it's a shame there's no fans to add to the spice, but these players will know what it means. I think the best Leeds can hope for, if I'm totally honest, is a draw. Mm. Sam? 2-1 United. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens in this kind of modern day War of the Roses, but it should be a great game <laughs> at the very least. Let's switch over to Spain, where there is a La Liga clash between Real Madrid and Real Betis. Madrid made easy work of Cadiz in midweek and got a taste of life at the top of the La Liga table. They play this game 24 hours before Atleti take on Athletic Club in Bilbao, two sides that wear the same kits because Atleti were originally an offshoot of Athletic Club. There you go. Uh, and it really is starting to feel like they sense the chance to take this title, Dean. Yeah, definitely. And two more goals for Karim Benzema in midweek as well in that 3-0 win. Um, he's got 21 goals now this season. Nine of those have come in his last seven La Liga games. Fair to say he's finding form at the perfect time. Um, also, lads, look, Madrid are the bad boys of football right now because Florentino Perez and his role in setting up the European Super League, which he still insists is going ahead one day, by the way. Um, yeah, nobody likes him. And as a result, nobody really likes Real Madrid right now. So 
this actually doesn't help all the other teams in La Liga because one thing we know about Madrid from years gone by is they love it when people hate them and they thrive on it. And in a season like this, when barely anyone gave them any hope of winning La Liga anyway, it's just another motivator to make sure they do. Yeah, it's 16 game unbeaten run as well. Uh, stretches back to the end of January. Haven't conceded a goal in the last three matches. I mean, Jack, you watch a lot of Real Betis. Is there any reason here to believe that they can go to Madrid and cause an upset? Because it doesn't sound like Dean thinks so, and I definitely don't. I think there's plenty of reason to believe, although the loss of Nabil Fekir after his red card midweek to Athletic will be a blow. Uh, even in that game, though, 10 men for 80 minutes, Betis with a side in the ascendancy, created the better chances until the very late stages where they did start to tire a wee bit. Uh, Pellegrini has created himself a side that compete really, really hard for everything. And I know that word has been thrown around this week a lot, but they really do compete. And the heartbeat of this side is a lot of people would say Fekir, but I actually think it's former Real Madrid man, Sergio Canales. He's Betis' his dynamo, the ace in the pack. And what a narrative it would be if he returned to his former club to put a dagger through the heart of Real's title charge. And um, I think it's eminently possible, although I am one a sucker for a narrative. And I could talk about Betis all day, but let's just quickly do predictions there before we look at one more game. Um, Dean? Um, yeah, sorry. i got to go with Real Madrid here. It's going to be about 3-0. Sam? It's a bit much, but I'd still take Madrid. I'll go 2 0. Okay, right. There is a big game Sunday night that deserves attention around the world, and it's in France. Liga leaders Lille travel to fourth place Lyon for a game that is huge in deciding where the title goes this season. Lille are on 70 points, PSG in second on 69. Monaco in third on 68, Leon fourth, 67. So every one of those sides is going to believe that they can still win the league this season. There are five games left to play. This is the tightest title race in Europe. Sam, what are you saying? Well, there's a big game a couple of weeks ago that Lille won one nil at PSG. So we definitely have reason to believe in this team and reason to believe they can get it done when it matters the most. And what I'm falling back on here is the meanest defence in Liga by far. 20 goals conceded in 33 games is mind-blowing. It's Atletico Madrid stuff. And they don't even have Jan Oblak in goal, right? They don't have superheroes between the sticks. This is just a, this is just a normal team. Oh, my goodness me. They're so solid. So, so solid. And if it's an elite defence that you're falling back on, I feel like you can trust that when the going gets tense. And they don't tend to drop points. They don't tend to squander leads when they go ahead, right? That's a very clear trait in them. So even coming up against a very, very good Leon side, a Leon side with Memphis Depay in form, Lucas Paqueta enjoying a renaissance period, they're in a good groove. I still have faith in Lille to win this game and have a massive say in this title race. Oh, very, very good. So Lille go into this fixture, Dean, one point ahead of PSG, but the Parisians pay mid-table Mets on Saturday. So the table could look different, very different, before Lille even kick off on Sunday. That's a load of pressure. Yeah, yeah, it certainly is. And all the stats tell me that you've got to believe in them, but how do they cope with pressure? I mean, that's really tough to gauge. And Lille have lost one away game all season. Um, but they're facing a Leon side who are inspired by Memphis Depay. He's the second top scorer in Liga behind Mbappe. He's the captain. He scored two goals in each of his last two league games. He will want to have a big say in swinging this title race and putting his team firmly back in the picture. Are you backing him to do so? Um, yeah, I'm going to go for a draw here, I think. Yeah, I'm, I, Tough to put a, a scoreline on it, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's like 1-1 one, one or something. Okay, well, such a good title race in France, and I implore you to keep eyes on it. It's definitely one that we'll have eyes on. And that's pretty much it for our weekend preview. Have a great time taking in all the action, and we'll be back soon.